Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're doing an unboxing of the U.S. Civil War, uh, third edition, second printing, as it very clearly says on the side. Uh, it's by Mark Simonich. It's the uh, closest thing to a monster I ever want to get. It's two mounted boards of Civil War. I'll just say action, because you don't want to say Civil War. Goodness, do you? So, uh, if you're curious as to which version, it is GMT 1506, which is the game number, and Dash 21, which means it was printed in 2021, 2022. Sometimes those uh, cross over when it's at the beginning, end of the year kind of thing. They have the box, they have the number assigned, and then, you know, with everything going on in the world, uh, delays are to be expected. So, it is a big, heavy beast of a game, and we are going to open it up and see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Oh, Don't forget to subscribe oh, and click the bell. One ringy dingy. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so we have beautiful artwork here. They, uh, I'm sure it's not a generic Civil War battle, it, uh, but it's by Thor de Tholstrup in 1887. Did this artwork, it's very nice. All right, so here we go. First thing you get, the rules of play. And again, this is a recent printing and I'm very happy that this is, they've gone back to their um, uh, matte, matte paper. So that shiny glossy paper, see how this doesn't reflect too much light. Uh, so this is the good stuff, so. Anyway, this is a 40 page rule book. Yeah, because there's the index on page 40. So, it is a 40 page rule book, full color. And this game has optional rules. It does have optional rules starting on page 31. Um, and some special rules on 24. Um, but it guides you through it. Um, this third edition is dated as of August 2021. This doesn't look like a printing error. I think it's just supposed to be artistic, kind of like an old document. It's just kind of weird because it doesn't have it anywhere else, but it's not, it doesn't seem to be a smudge or anything like that, in case you're wondering. Um, so it starts you straight into the game. Here's the markers. Here's the rules. It's an indexed rule book, uh, you know, with paragraph numbers and so on and so forth, so it can refer back to things. Um, the game, the game has been very well received. This is, you know, you you may have seen this played already over the years, but this is the the new and improved or newest printing. So, full color, uh, very dense rules though, but not too hard to to understand. I don't think the solitaire on it is not listed as highly solitaire friendly. It is a I play this side. I play both sides to the best of my ability. So um, you do have to you have to watch out for that. But uh, um, like any war game, it's very easy to to true solo playing both sides. So um, to going through that, and then you get to the amphibious, the river. And then the optional rules, dice difference of two, salt axes, army markers, so on and so forth. So, um, And then 32 actually starts the scenarios. So pick, pick the scenario you want to play. So we have an 1861 scenario, 1862, 1863, or the campaign game, which is 20 turns. Each of these, so the 1861 scenario is only three turns long. So you can start out small, bite size, learn the game, and then go from there. So that's kind of kind of cool. Naval action cost chart, map notes, and then hence on playing the Union and the Confederates. All right, and then you do have an index, which is nice. It tells you if you're looking for something, you can just find it, and it'll tell you what, uh, not page number, but what rule section, 11.7 for movement of strength points by land after battle. Go to 11.7, there you go. Then we have another rule book here that is the Advanced Naval Rules. 
and this is the advanced game so this is all apparently the naval rules are part of the advanced game so you don't add those in first you you work there it does have a change here from the first to second editions let's take a quick peek at that this this whole thing here is only 16 pages and uh, again nice nice stock here um, what page did I say? I said page 13. So design notes here starting on 11. And page 13. Second edition notes. Uh, and then uh, third edition notes. So the difference between second and third edition is here. There were no changes to the maps and counters. Player aid card, asterisks and diamonds were added to the CRT to reduce the number of tied battles. And blockade table was modified. So um, if you have the first edition, uh, this book should be available on the GMT website and you can download it and you can read the differences to see if you need to upgrade yours. If you want to upgrade yours, they may even have an upgrade pack. You could check gmtgames.com to find that out. So, those are the two books. Now we have counters. And we have, looks like three sheets of counters. We do. Here they are. These are the uh, the rebel forces. You got some generals, troops, and then control points. One would assume. And then we've got the Union troops here. I'm glad they went with a white with you know blue accents for this. It'd be harder to read if they were all blue. Um, and these kind of stand out a little more. And then you got your different armies. Uh, and then control markers for the Union. I like that they got the flag right, both flags right for the era. And the number of stars, so on and so forth. And that's counter sheet number one. Counter sheet number two. We've got different armies, and then these are strength points. Just generic, you build them up. So twos, fours, six, eight, eighteens, and twelves. And on the back we got ones, three, so it's odd on the back and even on the front. And then these are fortresses, I believe, and there's uh, the Confederate and the Union fortresses as well. Fortifications. All right, and then you got some more counters here. We've got destroyed, we've got die modifier markers, foraging, uh, the naval, you got the naval section there, some markers, cannons, ships, um, blockades, I believe, and then a couple more generals over here, Farragut, Foot, Porter, probably Naval, Admirals. All right, so then we've got two Army display cards, a nice GMT coated cardstock, Confederate Army display, Union Army display, Army of the Potomac, Cumberland, Tennessee, Southwest, and the Army of Northern Virginia, Army of Tennessee, Army of the West, Army of Mississippi. So you could put those here and then move that army marker around the board to say this is the army and this is what that represents. All right, then we've got setup cards. Here is a Union setup card and a Confederate setup card for the 1860, oh, let's just turn it over, yeah. So 1861 scenario, 1862 scenario for each. 1863 scenario. And you will set these up and it tells you what hex they're going to go into. And then we've got our CRTs, reference cards, two of those, one for each player, combat results table, random states table, surrender table, blockade table, various charts and uh, rules, references, and procedures that you're going to need, terrain, terrain tables, and what the different markers mean. Those were entrenchments, would be zigzaggy lines, those were entrenchments, and these were forts, not fortifications, so sue me, sorry. All right, so you get two of those, those are those, uh, you know, the double-sided, or not double-sided, double width cards. And then look at this treat. We have a included GMT tray for sorting your markers. I had seen this once before. In fact, I had the first edition when it first came out, and 
this is really easy to, to sort because you just have to sort by turn what comes out where and they're marked and so it's it actually gets really easy to sort this so one tray should handle most of it because everything's going to go on the board so you just have it have it sorted we have a tray bring all this stuff up here and then we have dice we got three red three blue As usual, we've got to test them, make sure they work. They're a good size. They're about the 16 millimeter, I think, and they are rounded, so they're not flat squares. And what do we get here? We got 9 and 2 is 11, and we got 6 and 7 is 13. So the Union wins. That's it. Four's over. Union won 13 to 11. Double header tomorrow. And then we've got a little tiny, tiny, tiny deck of cards here. Little tiny deck of cards. So the card deck that we had, the tiny cards is uh, Union Special Action, Confederate Special Action. So these are just some special things that they can do. So Trans Mississippi cards. Which you can take a special action in the Trans Mississippi area, the West area, East area, any area. Basic game allows for an amphibious invasion one strength point and looks like the union has the same so you just shuffle these i guess and be assigned some and allows you to take actions above and beyond your normal actions they're special actions all right and now we've got these bumpers to keep the board in place boards plural and let's open those up and try to take a look at both of them because it's pretty darn big. Okay, so this is the uh, eastern half of the board for U.S. Civil War. This has your turn record track on it. Um, can't set up them both <laughs> side by side right now, um, but it's, you know, you got your states. This is going up your uh, eastern seaboard. Looks like you get all the way to Philadelphia. There's Pittsburgh, going over to Ohio. We've got border, border state control states. A status, excuse me, destroyed Confederate arsenals, so on and so forth. Now, what's interesting is it's not really a, f it's not two full GMT, normal GMT maps. The panels, it's eight panels, but it, they're actually kind of a little smaller than normal. So you can see that they're not really the full, the full size. So it's not like you're having two. 22 by 34 uh, maps that are you know put together it's they're actually a little bit smaller than that so that is the eastern side so now this is the western half so we've got Indiana Illinois all the way over here we just barely get the edge of Kansas and then we get Indian Territory, which is where I'm at now, over in Oklahoma. And then uh, uh, Marshall, we got Shreveport, Louisiana. We do have Arkansas right here. The Ozarks, the Boston Mountains, Little Rock, so on and so forth. Vicksburg, Alabama. Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Kentucky, Florida. Louisiana. Action cycle for you to track uh, the random states tables. So some of those charts, some of those that were on the uh, player reference chart are on the map as well for your convenience. Displaced units, a terrain map key, so on and so forth. So that is the um, that is a look at the map. It's very beautiful. I like it's functional. I like that the uh, each square is, um, I like that each hex, because I know my basic shapes, each hex is self-contained. So this hex is all this terrain, and this is all this terrain. The only thing you have to worry about is like railroads going through, or rivers, things like that. And I think whether it's on a hex side versus whether it's in a hex matters. But the main thing is, I like I like its, its, its hexes put together. You're going to go through these hexes, so... All right, let's put this back and recap everything you get in the box. 
All right, so if you pick up a copy of the U.S. Civil War, designed by Mark Simonich, released by GMT Games, you're going to get two big, beautiful, full-mounted boards. You're going to get a tiny deck of cards. You're going to get six dice to resolve the war. You're going to get a GMT tray. You're going to get two setup cards, one for the Union, one for the Confederates. You're going to get two army displays. Guess, one for the Confederates, one for the Union. You're going to get three sheets of counters and markers, mostly markers. It's a very count, not a very counter-dense game. And that goes there, and you're going to get two copies of the player reference charts, which includes the CRT. You're going to get the Advanced Naval Rule Book and the Rules of Playbook. And that is everything that comes in the third edition, second printing of U.S. Civil War GMT Games. Because I'm a Mark Simich. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.